In this video, we're going to take a real quick look at some creative ways we can use volume and pan automation in Pro Tools using our pencil tool. So let's go ahead and get started. So I have strobe across some of these tracks. Now right now I just have this track here soloed. All right, now there's no automation on this track at all. I just want you to hear what it sounds like straight. So let's listen to this track. So it's just a wobble bass sound and it sounds fine. And within the context of your track, you may just want something that sounds sort of straight like that, but we can make it a little bit more interesting with automation. So let's come down here to this track. It's got the same exact sound on it. We'll just pull it down a little bit. Now we'll click this little drop down triangle and we'll select our pan, which you can click on your drop down and you have all these different automatable options. Now I chose audio pan and all types because this is a stereo track. We could choose pan left or pan right. I want both. Okay, just so we can see them here. Now right now this track sounds exactly the same. It's soloed. Okay, so let's add a little bit of automation and we're going to do that with our pencil tool. So we'll select the pencil tool and then we can of course start drawing in automation, which hopefully you already know that, but we have other types of the pencil tool as well. So I'll come back up to the pencil tool and I can click and hold my left mouse button or I can right click either one and we can choose our different tools. So let's choose the square. We're going to be focusing on the square and the triangle in this video. So we'll choose the square. Let's draw in some automation on, oh, I don't know, we'll just say on the right channel here. You see that automation being drawn in. Now control Z out of that. Let's go up here to our where it says grid where we're choosing our grid values. Right now we have it on 32nd note. Now if I change this to 16th note, now watch how my pencil draws. You can see now it's drawing in 16th notes. So our value of our triangle, our square, and so on is determined by what we have selected for our note value here. Okay, so keep that in mind because it's extremely important. Okay, so I'm just going to select all of this here and delete that automation and i'm going to come back to 30 second notes and let's draw in some automation here again with our square right across this track now because this is a stereo track obviously we have two channels now i could add more automation for the left channel it could be completely different i could even use a different tool if i wanted maybe i wanted the triangle tool i could do that if i wanted but i think for this uh, track in order to give it some, uh, it, you know, I don't want it to be completely panning everywhere. There needs to be some sort of a center to it. So what I'm going to do is I think I'll just drag this down to about the middle. So now we have the left channel going down the middle and the right channel is going to be panning back and forth. So now we'll hear this. All right, so that's much more creative, much more interesting sounding, in my opinion. Of course, it depends on exactly the track that you are working on, okay? Let's listen to this track here. Okay, so very static sounding. Let's use volume automation to make this a bit more interesting. So once again, just click your little drop down, and this time I'm going to choose audio volume. And I'll come up here to my pencil tool. Let's choose square first. And my resolution for this, I think I'll do 16th notes. Let's try that. Now, it depends where I start drawing my automation, especially for audio volume. If I start at the bottom here, start drawing out, and I can come up. I don't want to come past that center line there, at least not too far, because I don't want to clip. You know, I don't want to be going plus 12 dB here. So I make sure when I'm dragging up and down, I don't go too far up for the audio volume. And that looks good. And let me just show you something else here. If I start about say at the top, okay, now you can see the top range is greatly exceeding our zero dB, but uh, I want my bottom range to not completely bottom out. I just want it to go down a little bit. So I'll adjust that right here. That's pretty good, that's low enough. Then I can come up here and choose my trim tool. Let me trim this down. See, I only chose one, control Z out of that. I could choose my selector tool, but let me just choose our smart tool here make sure everything's selected. Then just come to the upper portion of our automation here and I can drag down my peak so I'm not peaking so loud. Okay, now let's see what this track sounds like with some volume automation. So not too bad, a little bit more interesting. Just take that tip and apply it where applicable. Now let's move on and now let me show you some triangle automation. Triangle, instead of 
like a square is basically going straight up and straight down, almost like on off messages, where a triangle is going to be more tapered. So a slow up, slow down, or not necessarily slow, just it will have a slope instead of just straight up, straight down, okay? So again, we'll choose 16th notes, sounds okay to me. And let's go back here. And this track here is exactly the same as our previous track. Okay, once again, we're going to do the audio volume automation. And let me just start drawing this in here. This time we'll go all the way down so it bottoms out, turns completely off. And as you can see, I'm really a bit too high there. I don't want to be going plus 12 dB. So let me just pull that down. There we go, that should work. Now let's hear this track with our triangle volume automation. All right, not too bad. Let me control Z out of that. And we'll go to 30 second notes this time. And let's draw in some more automation. Make sure we choose our pencil tool. Uh, that looks about good. And we'll hear this. So there you go. That is a much more interesting sound than just the straight static notes, at least, you know, in the context of certain tracks. You can do all kinds of really cool things with automation, just simply using your pencil tool here in Pro Tools and using these two shapes, your triangle and your square. And of course, we have a random shape, which I'll show you a little bit of right here. Let me just drop this down. And now take a look at our random shape it is just that it's random so as you can see that would be a lot of different pan moves in this case since we're on our audio pan but that's how the random automation works it is simply random of course you have other tools here freehand lets you do whatever you want and we have line tools so you can do straight slopes okay and parabolic which is not going to work for our audio pan and the same for the s curve it's not going to work right here in our audio pan or in our volume okay so you can see our pencil turns white to let us know that we can't do those types here so thus far we've strictly been dealing with midi we can do this of course with audio as well which hopefully that is clear to you that this is not just simply for virtual instruments things like that you can do it with your audio you can do it with vocals bass guitar and right here I have a guitar track set up so just real something really simple all right now I've already applied some pan automation and this is a mono track by the way so I've already applied some pan automation using our our uh, triangle tool here I believe this was drawn in with 16th notes but let's go ahead and hear this track now with that pan automation and also I have a BBD delay on this track as well just to make it a little more wide sounding a little more interesting so we'll hear this so something like that might work of course you could do square automation on your pans as well and just go left right left right or you know you don't even have to go full 100 percent left 100 percent right if i show that on here if i start about in the middle of this track instead of starting at the top or the bottom start around the middle and I can control exactly how far my pan depth is going Do you see that by dragging up or down depending on you know where I want the pan moves to be at each particular time I can maybe I just want a little bit of panning back and forth okay so it depends on where you start on your track I started at the bottom here all right so just keep in mind where you start on the track uh, does make a difference Okay, but let's move on and I'll show you one last thing. So here is another guitar track, exactly the same guitar track with exactly the same pan automation already drawn in. But now we're also going to add some volume automation, which I already have pulled out here. You can open more lanes of automation just by clicking your plus sign there. And of course, using your drop down and choosing what you want. So I want volume. And this time, let's go for some square shape. And I'm going to change this to 30 second notes. And again, since this is volume, I don't want it to peak very high. I think I'll start around the bottom here, drag it up. We'll just draw in this automation. There we go. That looks good. So now let's listen to this guitar track with the pan automation going back and forth with our triangle shape and then our volume 
basically cutting on and off with our square shape and 32nd notes, whereas our triangles were 16th notes. And again, I have the BBD delay on this track as well. So we'll listen to this. All right, so pretty cool. Again, remember some things like you can choose your smart tool here and hover around in certain areas of your track. Like if I come to the top here, we get our downward facing bracket and then I can adjust individual uh, break points in our automation or I'll come over to around the middle of the track. You can see how it turns to a cursor and make sure I select everything here and then come back about to the top and I can drag that up or down and adjust all of our automation all at once. So that's a pretty nifty trick to know as well. So that's about all I have for this video and using our pencil tool to create interesting automation for our pan and volume parameters. Pretty cool stuff. And of course, you know, there's plenty we can automate in Pro Tools, like we can automate plugins, of course. And even though this video isn't really about plugins, let's go ahead and click our little uh, automation button there. And I, then I can add exactly what I want to automate. Okay. And then when I come back to my track and go to my drop downs, now you can see I can choose that plugin to automate. And there's my automation lane for that plugin. So I can automate the delay using our square tools and our uh, random tool, triangle tool, freehand tool, line tool. Okay, so keep that in mind as well. There's all kind of really cool things you can do with automation here in Pro Tools. And one more thing I will mention is, let's come up here to Window and Automation. And this is our automation dialogues. So say I don't want to hear this automation, I'd, I'd like to hear it straight and you know, without the automation. And let me just play it again here, this guitar track with the pan automation back and forth. Okay, so maybe I don't want to hear that. I can just hit suspend. Now my automation is suspended. And when I play it back, just play straight and I can always take that off of suspend and go right back. All right. So that's all I've got for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and get out there and start using your automation in Pro Tools and create some really cool, interesting tracks using your pencil tool and pan and volume automation.